up, everybody? Welcome back to Talking Hoops with Rayfield Davis. We got a special episode, and I know I say that all the time, but as you can see, my guy smiling and cheesing, he laughing, he having fun. This is probably one of the most exciting episodes on the podcast I've ever did, because my first question is going to be a heavy hitter, because we I done seen P. P.J. Thompson is our guest, everybody, obviously. Um, one of the best point guards ever played at Purdue University. Although, as I tell you and Lou Jack, Brandon Smith just got to graduate. <laughs> Brandon Smith just got to graduate. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then it was a good run, fellas. But um, No but, question. No question. Like, as Coach Painter calls him, going to be a star in this business, going to be gonna be a really good coach in this business. And, I, I mean, you know Coach Paint. I know Coach Paint. I ain't never heard him say nothing he ain't believe. And that's no a that's a real high high level of just respect to that point because I know you've been right next to paint and now you got that board and we're getting all that we're getting all that but yeah. coming off the final four great season obviously all of that all of that but all of that my first question is because I've been seeing pictures pop up yeah like you with your teammates over the years and I've been seeing certain guys show you love and he we knew he would be a great coach early so if you go back and I know this is a dumb first question but if you go back yeah. to all the teams you played with throughout your career. Yeah. All the guys, you the coach. Who's your starting five of teammates? Oh man, that's a really good question. Really good question. Cause I, it, it probably just depends like all levels. All I, levels, like A. However, however good they were at that level. Cause you know you got guys that were like really like for example, like Jake, we, we both we both know Jake Quan while I was cold. Right. But like, you know what I mean? So like right. you go all levels, put them all in one high school A, you even throw dudes you play with middle school end up being yeah. good. College too. That is so freaking hard, brother. That is, that's really hard. I got to go. Trey Lyles definitely has to be on there. Mm -hmm. And like, see, the four is tough, man, because obviously Trey Lyles can play with a biggie. He can. But you know how I feel about Vince. Mm, see? see? And I, and I love Vince and like, I like fours that can do it on the inside and out. Great. I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with Lyles and I'm going to go with Vince just because how I want to play. Yes, yeah. you the coach. It's gotta I'm going to go. I'm not going to put myself on there. So it's guys I play with. Trey, mm, I'm going to go with Trayvon Blewett from Xavier. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go Dakota mm -hmm. and my one, that's tough. Uh, I'm not picking myself. You know, I'm going to pick Bryant McIntosh. I played with Bryant from assistant at Northwestern. Uh, so I got Bryant, Trayvon, Dakota. Vince and Trey Lyles. I got a good five. I got a good five. You got a good five. I got a good five. It was a lot. I thought about going John Octius at the one. I thought about going you, but then Dakota would have called me while we on the Zoom <laughs> or podcast. You would have felt so, so You know how they, Dakota take it personal. He won't talk to me for a month. You know he crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have Dakota on there. I'm getting a, a, a conversation about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, straight up though, but straight up no, P. I will say, no, that's a good team. That's a good team. Y'all gonna win at a lot of different levels. And y'all win at the high school level, y'all the one at the college level, y'all could win some games. You know what I mean? So yeah. like, all that, all that beside itself. But the season y'all had this year, after coming back from last season, obviously being beat by the 16 C, uh, I've been hearing coach talk about it in a sense of it's like a redemption tour in a way, and the way you guys yeah. went about it and reaching the final four. I mean. The way I even went about the tournament, just pure, just I mean, dominating to get there. Yeah. Well, if you had to sum up this season into just like, well, well, how would, how did you, how did you feel? What was some of the things that y'all went through behind the scenes and kind of what was, yeah. what does this, looking at ten years from now, what is this season gonna mean to you? Oh man, it it means everything. I I think this is you know, it's gonna mean everything to me when I'm you know I'm old and my kids have kids like. It was such an unbelievable accomplishment. It's like my first feeling was like happy tears, one for Coach Painter, and, and two, it's just like I'm so big on leaving the jersey in a better place, and that doesn't always equate to 
get into the NBA, that doesn't always equate to having high level success, but like we had a lot of really, really, really just good people come through before this team and help set the foundation, um, like guys, including yourself. And so like coach always talks about having two dreams through education and through basketball. And it's like, are guys able to like be on TV like you, like people seeing that and then having guys in the NBA like Jay and Ivy, like yeah, from a recruiting standpoint, it's like, this is something you want to be a part of. And for us to do it for our former players and to do it for Coach Painter, it was, it was an unbelievable experience. It was hard this year just because, like, with all the success we had <clears throat> in non-conference, and it's like none of it matters. Like, we could be ranked number one. Like, we can win the Big Ten again. And it's like we know it doesn't matter. And so you're kind of on edge because it's the only thing you can really do is win the next game and win the next game. But then when that next game is the NCAA tournament, I think our guys had a business-like approach and um, we made a heck of a run. What was that like though, Keith? Cause obviously the elephant in the room, regular season didn't yeah. matter. Conference tournament didn't matter. What was right. that like keeping the guys engaged and keeping them still focused on the, because you guys could have went out there and still finished fourth in the league. So you know yeah. Still went out there and still won games, still did what you were supposed to do. What was that like? And was it even, was it hard keeping the guys engaged or was it kind of like? It wasn't, it wasn't, man. It's, it's, I learned so much from this group. It's like the way I approach the game is kind of Dakota, like it's serious. I'm about business. It's like, I understand how hard you got to work as a, you know, a, a five ten guard to make it to play high major college basketball let alone be a part of a team like Purdue. So it was like within me, I've always approached the game in a serious type of way. Like everything I did was like, I'm studying Coach Payne. I'm studying all the great ones, how they approach it. And I'm trying to like implement that for myself. Like these guys taught me so much because Lance Jones brought like a level of being loose while also being productive. Like, He's texting guys before texting guys like Zach the night before every game. Hey, you the best, you the best player I've ever seen with my own eyes. Like, I need you to be special tomorrow. He's, the confidence that Lance gave Braden took his game to another level. Mm. Like, I don't know if it happens without him getting here. And like they did it in their own way. Like these guys were so freaking confident and they just wanted to get to March. And it's like when you see that from your team my first reaction is like, ah, are they, are we too loose? Like, do they not know what can happen? And it's in, and, and we weren't like, it was, it was a perfect level of uh, seriousness and being loose. And uh, we were able to make that run to the championship. And I said that, I said that right away, just about um Lance. I could see it in the summertime. And I remember, um I remember I said that Lance is just kind of like JL. And I don't remember, I didn't mean in the sense of, play style or whatnot, but just in the sense of the vibe they brought to the gym when they no rocked out, like everyone felt it. Like J.O., I, I can still remember, like like you said about Braden, I wouldn't have had the junior season I had if J.O. didn't come. He brought a right. confidence, he brought a swag, he brought a, oh, yeah. God, what y'all doing? Like a oh, big, what did you notice about Lance? Oh man, I, I kind of could see it right away. It's like, okay, we, brought him in not necessarily to start next to Braden like mm -hmm. coach Payne's not like that like he's not gonna be in a recruiting meeting he don't care who you are promising anybody anything <laughs> right so you brought him in understanding like hey like you know we need it to be more skilled we need guys that can dribble pass and shoot but we need a guard that can do it on both ends we had to sub a lot you know based on people's you know certain skill sets we wanted a guard that can do both and change the game in both ways. And, um, and he did that. Like I, you kind of saw it in the summer, just the way he was able to get in the paint, like even Braden, like he, he's not, he, it was a different way. Braden can do it through pick and rolls at the best, with the best of the best. Lance can do it just one-on-one. -on -one. I'm getting by you. And it's like, that's something we haven't had. It's like some stuff that we were seeing in transition early in the summers. And then when the game started, like we haven't seen it, seen it since Jay and Ivy, like, it was a certain, it was just certain things on the basketball court to where it's like, man, he immediately makes us different. We know what we're getting from Zach, like one of a kind. Like we know we're getting that. What we saw in the summer, we're like, okay, we're gonna be better than we were last year. And like that's that's hard to say, right? Oh, that's that's crazy as shit. And then again, like you said, I'm just going down a list of guys to just kind of 
giving a recap because, like you said, Lance came in, affected it right away. The culture, the upbeat. I heard him talking shit to Braden the first day, and I'm like, God damn, this dude knew. You feel me? Like, <laughs> so like I was like, oh yeah, I like him. And then just Braden, Braden's jump because you could tell he took some of that swag from Lance, but no. then he just. He one of them dudes, like you said, like a Dakota, he just got some shit to him. He just ain't scared. He just going to carry a big stick. You know what I mean? Like, he just, he don't care who in the, in the gym, he going to be who he is. So where did right. you see Braden grow this year? Man, it was something cool. I talk about it with Coach B all the time. Like, um, Jeff T, Marcus T, those guys in Indy, like, they have their own gym, right? So they, they'll they do runs, and uh, they'll play all the time. Uh, Andre Owens, I believe, former NBA player, like, you know, he's there. And obviously, some of those guys are older, but, like, it's real dudes, you know, in the gym, summer hoop in Indy, and, like, you know, Braden's taking guys, or Mason's taking guys with a Braden. Like, we got dudes just going to hoop just because they want to find the best runs, and it's like, Oh, you're not afraid to go play against Marcus Teague and Jeff Teague and they own jump. Like that's that's the type of per person and player you want is like the leader. Like Braden's not a guy that always speaks his mind, kind of similar to I was as a player. But when he did, it meant something. Like when he got on somebody, it meant something. And he was doing that type of stuff in the summer and just hanging out with the guys more. He's a guy that wants to play basketball, go home and watch basketball or play his video games. There is absolutely nothing else. And like, he's taking more time to hang out with guys. And you saw it in the summer with him, man. He's such a special player. Like I, I hate, you know, stuff on Twitter. I hate when people would say like, well, he's nothing without, you know, Zach Eady. And it's like, man, I've, I've seen a lot of basketball and been around it for a long time. And he, he's special. Like, like special in the sense to where I think he can play at the highest level of basketball for a long time. Like we think the world of Braden, we're very grateful that he's with our team in this day and age where you lose everybody every year and you're starting over. Like we don't got to deal with that. And to know you got him coming back, you know, leading your team, although you're losing a generational talent, like you got to feel good about it. All right. And before we get to the generational talent, obviously big fellow, but like, the way coach recruit, the way you see the game, the way B is out there recruiting, Lusk, I mean, Coach, I mean, Coach Johnson, I mean, everybody. How did y'all find a brain of Smith? Yeah, it's a good question. He was under. Not to cut you off, not to cut you off. When Brady Smith committed, I remember I was in the gym. He was on campus like the first month. I was like, hey, man, I don't know if you remember. I was like, hey, man, the fans still say y'all need a point guard. Yeah. <laughs> need <a> point guard. <laughs> so, like, he looked at me like, who is this dude? <laughs> No, for real. I just kind of like walked away, but like, how did y'all? Because I, how did y'all know what is what are y'all looking for in a recruiting path? Obviously, rankings don't matter. No, no. this coach, what are y'all after? Yeah, man, Co coach is special when it comes to that. I think he's found a niche that works for him. I think it's different ways to do it. I think you can be successful doing it the way people are doing it and starting over every year if you got the budget for it. Um, but one thing, paint has figured out and mastered is he's going to do it differently and it's going to work. Like we don't just run ball screen motion offensively like everybody does. You know, he figured out the football type of system, offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator. I got a personnel guy. I got GAs is going to do this. I got a Dobo that's probably the, not probably he's the best Dobo in the country. Like our video guys, been, like just his setup and everybody knows their roles and they do their best to perfect it. It starts with his staff and the organization of that. And then like, he just doesn't recruit everybody. He doesn't promise anyone anything. He's very specific about how he gets it done. We, we got personality guys, Chad Brown, his, pro, his uh, company called profile. Like we go, lead, we do a lot of different things to figure out who these guys really are and what they're about. And if it matches, then we have a proven success rate of it's working with former players. Like your journey is your journey, but you know, we have plenty of twos and threes and fours and fives and, you know, point guards, we can show you to where it's worked. It's one. And these guys have went on to have successful lives as basketball players or in a, in a different field. But, you know, with Braden, um, but I believe it was COVID. They didn't get to see him play in person a ton, but everyone was, you know, sending them film and talking. I forget it was one guy. I can't remember who it was, but he called Braden a basketball savant and paints like, dang, like, a basketball savant like that's a pretty big statement and he's like like no coach like he's a basketball savant coach went eventually he gets to go see him in person and and all that and 
you know, it just he wasn't recruited, man. Like people didn't recruit him. Nation State. <laughs> like nobody, nobody was after him. And then like I think when Paint got to know him, because Paint recruited him. Like yeah. when Paint got to know him and then he's watching this film and then he sees him in person, that's who I want. And then he linked him with you and y'all spent a lot of time. I could see Braden coming off of ball screens and it's like yeah. I was Vince off camera. And I'm mm -hmm. like, I seen PJ work out a hundred times. I yeah. know him off right to the ball screen. The basketball is coming here, and it's going there. Right, right. So how, much, how much time have y'all spent together? And you see it, like, and you yeah. can make it. You can see it in social media. You can see it in not just not your post, but Braden posts. Like, yeah. you play, you play. Like, right. we, you all get with a coach. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you can see Braden as the, you, you as guy. So what has that relationship been like? How, I'm, and you won't say it. You won't yeah. say it. I can say it. The, yeah. what, what you've put into his game is noticeable. So where, where did that development start and, like, how close are y'all and all of that? Yeah, like, Braden's my guy, man. I, he started, I mean, Braden already back in the gym and all of that. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. He texted me. Uh, well, he was FaceTiming me in L.A. He was he was uh, geeking over, hanging out with Caitlin Clark at, at the award show. So he was FaceTiming me in L.A. And, you know, they were having fun after the, the, uh, the ceremony and, he was like geeking over Caitlin Clark. So he was like scared to ask her for a picture and stuff one. Um, and now she follows him back on Instagram. Oh, so now I think they're going to become buddies since she'll be in Indy <laughs> hopefully tonight. Uh, I'm sure he'll be DMing her all the time for some tickets. So uh, no, but no, he texted, he FaceTimed me this weekend and then he wanted to get in the gym, man, like today. And I'm like, Braden, like we just played a national championship a week ago. But, you know, when your point guard wants something, you got to deliver it. So, no, I told him, man, I, last year we we had, um, you know, our postseason, you know, meetings. You know how those go in front of the whole staff. And it's just a sit down and, you know, everyone just giving their thoughts. And I told him, like, with confidence, like, there's no other point guard in the country I'd rather have leading our show. And, like, I understood the changes when he got to Purdue. The ball was going to be in point guard's hands more. I knew that if me and him were close and – if we can think the same way, we're going to make Purdue a better team. And so we kind of been attached at the hip since, man. Everything we do probably makes guys jealous because we're always with each other and talking and joking around. But I know how important it is for your point guard to be like a leader, um, especially when they're going to have the ball in their hands as much as he is and be a decision-making guy. So it started his freshman year, man, just watching film after all the games. Like I'll have uh, Jared or Tommy, one of our GAs, they'll cut up all his ball screen clips from the previous game, good and bad. And I'll watch every single ball screen clip with him or a time where I, he was in an ISO situation, even though he's not much. And it's like, okay, you should have done this or do that. So we do that after every game. Yeah. So, you know, in the way our system's set up now, he's coming off 40, 30 to 50 ball screens a game. And so we'll watch every single one of them and, you know, we'll assess it from there, but it's a, it, it's been a cool process. Like I, I try to have that relationship with all the guys, but you, you, you it's definitely special with Braden and I'm, and I'm very thankful for him and I's relationship. Uh, we thankful as fans for your relationship. <laughs> I just, as I always say, like I always say, guards make you go on March. Like Zach is yeah. Zach, but guards make you go. Your guards got a hoop and they got to be confident. And Braden is, Braden has former point guards wishing they had the Braden Smith light. Braden got his own light now. It ain't green. It ain't yellow. It's it's, it's a Braden light. <laughs> but no nah, question. No question. Talking about just the offense and y'all being at the hip real quick. Just what's it been like the maturation of Coach Paint offensively? And I know now you carrying the board. What is what's all that been like? Because coaches, coach was he was so. And I talked to Coach Beeline, John Beeline, about this a bunch in the green room. It's coach is all so defense, 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 and now it's. Y'all, I guess it's the it's like a the offensive flow y'all got. It's it's crazy. So what's yeah. and you've been there. I always tell people, PJ never seen a bad year of Purdue basketball. I know COVID year, we can dismiss it, but like yeah, and coach has taken a step each level. You didn't damn near seen every step. So what does the yeah. offensive step look like over the last couple of seasons? Man, it's crazy you said that because like back back my freshman year, it's like you know, the 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 triple screens we were running for Kendall and you know, the post upsets for AJ, um, Swivel, you know, everybody knows Swivel. I can say it on the pod. Everybody knows it anyway, right? Like our Swivel series, like um, I thought back then it was different. You know what I'm saying? Like nobody was running it then. And so ever since I've been at Purdue, I thought we were 
always ahead of the curve. You know, I scout and I watch how these offensive teams, you know, are attacking each defense, each game. It's my job. And it's like everybody just runs ball screen motion or a different variation of it. And like Coach Painter never wanted to be that way. And he's always going to play at the, the the strength of his best players, right? So you mentioned like Braden Smith having that light. It's like, man, like it's easy for a player to be like, well, if I was in this role, you know, I would do this too. And it's like, it's not as easy as you think, right? It's hard to be a guy that's dependent on give, getting 14 and seven each night. Like it's, it's really hard to do. Um, but one thing that we wanted to change from – you know, last year to this year was we needed to get like, we needed our offense to be even more efficient. And we did that through more ball screens, right? You're making five X guard multiple actions. Like before we would just kind of post up, post up, post up. Now we're the ball is changing sides of the floor. We're doing different actions, moving and changing the low man, picking on five X, making him do multiple things. Now we throw the ball back and that five X had to stop the ball now Zach has a sprint to the rim. Now when he posts up, it's totally different to where if we just call a post-up set, they push him out. He's got to take three or four dribbles, right? We still wanted to have that in the package, but we wanted to do less of it. And I, I think it's just paints never had a problem changing with personnel and changing with time. Like basketball in 2024 has played a lot different than it was my freshman year when you were a junior. Like, like total different game. And the people that kind of get left behind and don't adjust, like you get left behind, like basketball with this NIL stuff, like it's different. If you're stuck in your own ways, you're not going to have success in this business. And like paint has done it, has been able to change and adapt while still having his culture where, where it is with the best. Like, I, I don't know if we can name another coach that's done it the way he's done it can not like getting the most talented players. Like that's just something we don't do at Purdue, but we get really, really good players that are productive and it works for us. And speaking of change, I mean, it won't be no bigger change than what's going to have to happen next season. I mean, obviously you losing. I, mean, I, I want to hear you talk about Zach quick, but, but before that, I mean, just because we're speaking about change, you lose the big fella, you lose right. a guaranteed 25 and 12. I mean, yeah. To me, that we talk about it in a minute, but the best player to put on a uniform. No doubt. So, no. What will what will it look like next season? Is it something that um has been discussed? Is it something that is that maybe why Braden is in the gym a little bit earlier because he's starting to say this is um this is gonna be my show and he's starting yeah. to feel. It. Yeah, it's it's definitely gonna be different. It kind of reminds me a little bit of um when like they lost Carson. Mm-hmm. Like when Purdue lost Carson, uh, I was overseas. That that was the one year I wasn't a part when they went to the lead eight. But like Purdue started off that that year six and five, yep. right? And everyone was questioned. This is after my class left. For everyone that doesn't know, so the year after my class graduated, um, Carson, you know, was it was his time. Even though he was national shooting guard the year before, he had a lot of good support and supporting cast around him. Right? Ryan Klein was in a bigger role. Grady was in a bigger role. Um, no gel was coming off of freshman year, backing me up, playing 10 minutes. Now he's playing 30 minutes, Aaron Wheeler. So they trade me on freshman year. We, had, it was such a change that year and they figured it out and was able to go to an elite eight, right? I'm not saying that we're going to do that next year, but we've always found a way, no matter who's left to figure it out. Obviously it's different when you're seven, four, 300 than a guard. Um, so it's going to require us to change some things and play different, but we play so much, we played so much different in a way this year with some of the stuff offensively than we have in the past. It's just up to us to make adjustments. Like we're going to have to be better defensively. That means like guys got to guard the yard better. Like we can't do all the cross matching and stuff. Like maybe our bigs are more aggressive. You know, maybe we're able to, we got bigger, more, we got more mobile bigs. Well, maybe we don't have to sit and drop all the time. Maybe we can trap out of a timeout. So, like, it's, this is, like, the part of coaching that's fun. Like, you don't want it to be easy. In a way, it's easy with Zach, right? Now, it, it's if it was easy, everyone can do it, and they couldn't. But, like, this is the fun part where you got to figure out a way to, to win. And that's, that's what we get paid to do. And our players, they these guys are different. They have a chip on their shoulder. They know we left. We, they know Zach is gone. Like, that means they got to step up. But it's like – Guys like Miles Coleman, we came back on 
Wednesday. Sorry, we came back Tuesday. We stayed the night after we lost Monday. Came back Tuesday. I walked in because I was about to play in my old man's league, man. I came, was about to play. So I came back Wednesday to Mackey around like four or five, and I saw Miles in the gym, and I'm just like, can't believe it. But that's the type of culture and kind of the setup we have here, and our guys are hungry. They'll figure it out. No, nah, and, and all the dudes have won before. Because I know it's going to be the question of the summer. I mean, Zach Eady gone, ah, ah, all this dumb shit. I mean, all those dudes have won. They won. I mean, you think of Fletcher and Braden. Back-to-back Big Ten championships, trip to the Final Four. Yeah. Oh, they're just sophomores. So, I mean, no they got a level of maturity about them. They just go with them to some games. So, no, I don't – I don't honestly, I mean, once you set expectation, you set expectation. I don't see no drop-off. I mean, right. the locker room changed, but the mindset don't, like you just were saying. And then you look at – you think of Zach, and we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about Zach before we got out of here, man. Yeah. What is Zach – simply, what is Zach meant to Purdue? Oh, brother, like you've always said it, like – you said it before we even went to a final four that like, it's going to be hard to not say he was the best player ever at Purdue. I remember you and coach B talking about it. And I think when you like, I I think big dog was more talented, probably right. It's number one pick and he probably has more talent, but I think it's going to be hard to say that Zach's wasn't the best player to ever play at Purdue. Like <laughs> you, you got, you got to say it when you look at the production, man, where he took is like, but the way he did it, like I, I've told him he's the most humble and easygoing star that I've ever played with or worked with in my life. Like Jaden was emotional and, and, you know, in college and I was close with Jaden, like I was Braden. But in Jaden's, you know, he's grown up and, you know, changed so much already in the league and he's doing awesome. Um, and Jaden was a humble guy too, but a most like emotional, right? Zach's not like that. Like bring your lunch pail, like hard working, just does his job, ain't gonna say nothing. Like you, we know how to motivate Zach. Like Coach B, anytime he sees someone say something in a, a pre-game or post-game before they play is texts it over to the big fella <laughs> and then he'll just be like just send it over to the big fella we got 30 and 15 coming like hey man, he was, i told i said something in the under four terrence shannon was actually killing for a couple games in a row his average like 30 for like three games straight and i yeah. said man, it's under uh, under four means for people like it's like when the commercial break it's the under four timeout it go to commercial Right before it come back to the game, they give us 30 seconds on TV. 30 seconds to, like, preview the big show for the night. Like, after the okay. game, we go to the post-game show, right? Yeah. Because it's three of us. It go 10 seconds, 10 seconds, 10 seconds. Yeah. And I like a little eight seconds. I said, hey, man, if Terrence Shannon keep playing like this, could he win player of the year in the Big Ten? It's like mid-January. I yeah. could for the Rutgers game. So, I okay. come back to Purdue. I come in the locker room. Y'all had beat Rutgers, smacked them up, whatever. Yeah. Zach stopped me. Zach say, Ray. Terrence Shannon player of the year. I said, how the, I said, why are you even listening to that? Like, why do you even care? Like, oh, like, no, no, Ray, why like, are like, this competitive, bro. <laughs> oh, no, it's like, it's, it's crazy. Like, he was really mad at you, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> really wanted to have a conversation with you. It's like, dude, like, that's Ray's job. It's no, it's, it's, it's sick, man. He's one of the most competitive people oh, I've ever been around. Man. Just dominant. Look, you know, it's, you know how somebody's special. It'll be halftime, man. And we're like, man, we gotta like, we gotta play better. Like we, he, you know, Zach got it missed a couple around the rim. Like we gotta have that. And you check the box, like, and we just said Zach's gotta play better. He's got nineteen and nine, eight of twelve from the field, <laughs> two turnovers, and we're like, man, Zach's gotta be better. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's how you know like he's just he's just he's special man he's, he's like having him dominate dominate him. for sure what's him like having him dominate on the floor and obviously he gonna give it to you gonna give you them numbers he's gonna kill but in the locker room when i come in after the game dude yeah. just, one he signing autographs I, we know that but dude <laughs> just a pleasure per, pleasurable teammate to be around like yeah no he is he made sure our guys like he was a part that like when it was getting closer to the end of the season, he was starting to change. Like he just turned it up a notch and it's like, he was ready. And it's like, when you got a guy as dominant as Zach, like we just going to hop on your back, big fella. And you're going to take us to the promised land. It's like, he's one of those guys. And not a lot of times you get to be around those special type of players, 
but it's like there's not a game and in UConn was unbelievable I promise you before that game I was confident as ever I'm just like they're a really really good team they obviously were not dumb they might be better in this area or that area but like Zach's capable of getting 45 like you knew they were going to be in drop coverage. I didn't think that they would stay home to the extent that they did. We needed to play better to force them to change, and we didn't. But you, I knew that they would be in drop coverage and Zach would have a monster game. I thought we would play a little bit better um, and, and force them to be able to help. Now we can get more threes off, and we didn't. But, you know, even in a game like that, of that magnitude, it's like you can't help but be confident because of who Zach is and – I mean, he had 37 and whatever in, in the national championship. It was a historic run for Purdue. I think he changed for Purdue for forever. Like, and he kind of felt like that, you know, when, when Biggie was here, mm-hmm. Zach took it to a level that's unimaginable, like unimaginable. I got to have you ask. I don't, I don't want to put you on the spot, but when you go talk to Paint and Bray, and Brantley, tell them yeah. I said, tell, and Zach too, because Zach mad at me. Tell yeah. them I said that Zach the best player there playing in the Big Ten. If you look at if you look at the names and you look mm-hmm. at who you play with and you look at the teammates that they had, I know Magic gonna come up. Magic, Matt, when Magic won the national championship, yeah, number four draft pick on his team. I didn't never knew that. Wow, Rick Kessler wasn't a bad player, and Jay Benson went to the NBA the next season. And then you go to Isaiah, Isaiah freshman year, Isaiah Thomas. They his freshman year, he had mm-hmm. six pros on that team, six of them. When they won a national championship, it was four of them left on that team. From the previous year, they were really good. Mike Wilson and them. Then they had four. Yeah. You go to Jerry Lucas, PJ. Jerry Lucas, not back-to-back national player, whatever, whatever. He had five NBA players on that team. Like, legit. Right. You go to Glenn Rice. In 1989, Michigan won a national championship. They had six NBA guys on that team. Wow. So when you start looking at the guys that's been the best player on the team, led the country in scoring, not, not players of the year nationally, whatever. And then, because Magic Johnson didn't lead Michigan State in scoring or rebounds. Wow. So I look at I look at Zach Eady and I put on, because you look at Michigan, those teams, it was 3 of them. I mean, it was fat five. It was, you know what right. I'm saying? So, I don't know. I want to see where they think he stack up across that whole, the whole landscape. Because I, I know we talked about Purdue being the best player ever at Purdue. Yeah. I think that's easy. I think that's no longer a conversation. Because I know everybody was holding on to – I know I sound mad disrespectful, but like, yeah, big dog averaged 30. He had a thousand in the season, but Zach yeah. had 986 points or something like that and 470 rebounds. So, right. like, I don't know, but I think his conversation is more now. Yeah, we know he's the best player here, but what let's talk about the Big Ten. Cause I don't, I don't know if you can give me four, I don't know if you can give me three better players yeah. in the Big Ten that had a better college career than Zach, though. It's crazy. No, I mean, I think it's a really good talking point. You know, B and uh, Paint will love that too because they, oh, you know, yeah, they no. basketball historian, so they'll be able to tell us the the, the person's know. name, where they played, where they went to high school, who they we grew gotta get up. That out of here, all that, all that, all that forties <laughs> and fifties. We gotta because I don't, yeah. all the people that I, all the all the two I was in the green because now I've been around real basketball OGs like what Coach Weber, Coach Beeline. When they explained to me how defense was played back in the day. I don't know if they ever told you this, but like, because Bob, Coach Knight, this was Coach, Weber, Coach Weber told me, Bobby Knight or whatever came in and changed up everything. That's why they were so good at Indiana. They started to do help side. They started to play zone. Back when Rick Mountain them played, it was man to man, no help. You beat your man, you got a bucket. So like, I'm not trying to hear none of that. If you ain't play against a help side defense or a zone or a press or a one three one, um, so no, nah, um, but no, nah, before we get you out of here, if you um. If you had to give me your best moment of the season, PJ, because I, I think, um, no, I don't, don't want to hold you, but I got one more before I ask you that. No, you can go. What was that? What was that conversation like when you knew that you was getting that whiteboard? Yeah, it was uh, Coach Payne called, and he talked about just how it is from a a scout and a defensive standpoint. Like it's so much for one person to do, right? In a traditional, on a traditional staff, you probably have three assistants, two to three assistants rotating, you know, every game. Well, the way we were set up, you know, B does personnel every game. 
uh, Terry was doing, you know, the offensive stuff every game and Paul was doing the defensive stuff every game where the defensive stuff is probably the hardest because teams run, you know, so much stuff, right? From an offensive standpoint, like it's hard because it's so much during the game that you control and that you got to be able to adjust to or figure out. Um, and then in your prep work, you got to be prepared for a lot of different stuff, right? But uh, Coach Payne called and he was just like, I, I think it's best – you know, for my development and for Purdue in general, if we can get another person, you know, on defense. And he's like, it can put Terry back to where he's most comfortable with and what he's done, which is be defense. And then I'll have the offense. And then at that point, we were going to bring in Sasha to do under OBs, right? Mm -hmm. And so, like, for me, I was super excited just because I've seen people do it at a high level. I thought Coach G was really good, Um I think Shrews is one of the best that I've ever seen. Um, and then Coach T was able to do it, and I was able to watch him implement some new stuff. And we have a relationship dating back to high school, so it was really cool to work and learn from him. Um, and then when I was able to take it over, I kind of could, like, mix and match everything I liked from everybody and study, and, you know, I can put my own twist on it, too. And that's the thing about paint. Like, people don't understand, like, we're coming off of – to lose into a 16 seed in the most crucial time in Purdue basketball history. And he gives it to a 28 year old that's never done it. And so like, just from a standpoint of him, I, I like <laughs> paint can't ever do no wrong in my eyes. Like I've always been a paint fan, regardless of my situation. Like I, I've, I've everybody knows that I, I'm a big fan, big advocate for him. I think he's one of the best to ever do it. Um, I think you needed a final four to stamp it. And I think that stamps it. There's he's going to be in the basketball hall of fame one day. He's going to be remembered as one of the best co coaches to ever coach in the NCAA, let alone the big 10. And for, for me to be able to come in and learn for him, learn from him and have the relationship I've had with him since I was 14, 15, and then to play for him and work for him. Like I'd be, I'd be a fool to jump ship and try to leave and do it my own way or go somewhere else. Like, why would you ever do that when you're learning from the best? So him just making that change, that gave me confidence alone, even though I've never done it. And then obviously, just like anything else, I I knew the work that I, I was going to put in to, to make sure it went right. And, you know, it's gone well. Um, year one was a, a, a huge success. I think we probably finished around number four in offensive efficiency in the country. And the, the numbers in front of us were kind of, unbelievable so if it's us in illinois set big 10 records from years ago so um it was really cool it was really cool now people on twitter will say they gotta do it without zach and and we do so we gotta you know get back to the drawing board this summer and i'm super 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 excited we have a really good group coming back i think a lot of people don't talk enough about trey coffin like him and zach occupy the same space and now with him at being able to have more space I think you could see a, a huge, huge jump in his numbers because he's extremely talented. Um, and he's going to be a really good player. Oh, you said this. I remember I was in the open gym. This was before this season. You said yeah. two years, Ray. Trey Kaufman be all, all Big Ten market. Yeah. And I, I wrote it down because I said, let's find out. And then yeah. you talk about like Pee Wee, like all your teammates knew. I knew. We all knew. We knew Pee was going to be a good coach if that's what he wanted to do. Yeah. When did PJ, when did LaSalle know that LaSalle was going to be, because because this is not surprising. PJ Thompson leading Purdue to a great offense is not surprising to me. Mm -hmm. Like when did, when did you know that you we was capable? When did you know that you wanted to do this? Yeah, I think the more that you're in the business, I think you think one thing of the business when you're not in it. And then I think when you're in it and you get to learn, you either, it's either for you or it's not. And it's not uh, in between. Right. And I learned quickly that like it's for me just because I loved being around 18 to 23 year olds. And it's such a crucial development point of peace in their life from a standpoint of being a man and 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 a basketball player. And like I there's nothing that made me happier than making people better and making a difference in like their lives it's like I want to always like look back and they'd be like like PJs are real and like I can trust them and I can give advice on anything like it's bigger than basketball and I've always cared about Purdue because I always felt like 
as a player growing up, I had a lot more like goals and stuff um, that I wanted to do. And I felt like I did a good job with the role and what I was asked to do at Purdue, but I knew I had more and I was more, I was just so in love with Purdue and paint for giving me the chance to play high major college basketball, because that was the goal of mine. And he's the only coach that offered me in the big 10. Um, and so when I was able to come back and, and work for him, it's like I fell in love with the process of learning and just getting better from a coaching standpoint, like I did with basketball. And it was just a match made, kind of made in heaven. Like there's no other people that I, or I would want to be with. Like obviously man, it's a business and stuff happens, right? Sometimes it's not, doesn't work out always how you want. You might have to learn from other people, but I always tell people I, I've never been in a rush to leave Purdue because our staff is awesome. I'm learning from one of the best to ever do it. And we've had a different assistant, Shrewsbury, Coach Gary, Lutz, Coach O, Terry Johnson, you know, Coach B, uh, Lusk. Like I've, I've had so many different coaches that's been head coaches and had different experiences to where it's like, you're the fool if you're not learning, like while you're here, you don't got to leave to do it. And so I've always kind of taken that approach until, you know, I was at, like ha asked to or something. Mm, PJ, talking to you is like talking to paint all over again. It's <laughs> yeah. wait for eight, my son to get grown. But oh, <laughs> hey, I'm man, this, brother. If you had to put, if you had to put your best moment of the season, your favorite moment from start to finish, what was it? Definitely, definitely, definitely. Uh, the probably when we went to the Final Four, beating Tennessee. Yeah, yeah, that shit was just because it's like you did it. <laughs> like, right. and, and and I and I always respected Tennessee, and I knew that if there was a team that had the chance to get us, it could be them. I, I knew how good they were when we played them in Hawaii. Like I thought Tennessee was awesome. Yeah. I, I thought they had a really like everything you want, they have. Yep. And I'm like, this, this is going to be a tough one, but you know, if we can take care of the ball, we got a shot. All we got to do is take care of the ball. We're going to generate good shots. We do our work on the glass. They foul a lot. We're getting to the free throw line. So like, but you got to take care of the ball. We They needed our help from an offensive standpoint. Like, obviously, Don Connect's a great player. He's going to get hit regardless of what the scheme was. But if we didn't give them live ball turnovers, they couldn't capitalize it, and you made them score in the half court, I yep. thought we would outscore them. Yep. So yep. when we went to the Final Four, like, bro, it was just tears. Like, <laughs> it, it was just – you thought about everything. Like, your former teammates, bro, like – Hey, the fans like we was dressing alike. I remember you for like your first go workouts, like all that, whatever. You said to wear same shorts, same shirts, same shoes. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like you have no idea how hard it is. Like, we went, bro, we, we started in June. We traveled to Europe. We went to all like our non-conference was crazy. We went to Canada. Like it started in June and we had I no time off. No <laughs> I ain't run from nobody. Y'all played everybody. It just that <laughs> the season was just incredible from start to finish. Because even on the overseas trip, like even without Zach, like you had Trey Kaufman going off, showing what the future gonna look like. Like everybody's right. saying, what is this team gonna look like without? Like we kind of seen it. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? Like, you kind of got a piece of it. Like I'm excited though. Like we're Purdue. Yeah. Was, like what you saying about tears? Like I was in the back room, shut the door. Like I, right, hey man, this felt good like ah this it felt worth it like when y'all came in y'all first work out i'll tell the story all the time like people give me too much credit for any type of change in the culture like when y'all came in y'all first work out when y'all beat bryson kendall basil y'all beat them to the gym by an hour finished yeah. y'all workout before they got there you feel me and the next you know i love all those guys but all those guys transfer all the guys before me in that class transfer purdue lost every guy in the 2011 class every right. guy in the 2013 class and three out of the five in the 2012 class. So wow. like, you feel me? <laughs> like just you, just you and AJ. And then Stephen Torrey, remember he, yeah, Steven, yeah. Here, but you lost Jay, you lost Ronnie, you know what I'm saying? So, and then y'all the class came in and it just changed yeah. everything. Like I, it just was like the way y'all came in, like the way, like Vance, you, Dakota, even Jaquil, Isaac. Yeah. It, it, I, it, it don't get to this point without it, but no, nah, um, P, <laughs> Before we get you out of here, I gotta 
I'm happy for you, bro. Everybody out and everybody around the program, I'm happy for you, bro. I, I can't wait till you take the. Uh, I ain't trying to rush paint out of here, but I can't wait till you take these keys, man. <laughs> yeah, oh, bro. I, uh, I'm happy for you. Make sure you tell Zach that um, it's all it's all part of the game, man. He's still my favorite player. He's still my. Tell him, tell Zach that don't nobody push for Zach to be the best Big Ten player they ever seen above me. No <laughs> doubt. But no, nah, because I think I think you look at the numbers, you look at I mean, even you look at Braden this season and you compare him to guard. I was doing this all season. Like dudes yeah. was pissed at me. You compare him to like singular seasons to guards in the Big Ten, pretty mm -hmm. he right there. I mean psh, really Braden is right there with some of the and I'm talking about in terms of single seasons, yeah, yeah. single season run, he right there with the best of them. So like what he For was sure. able to do. It was crazy. Uh, seeing you with the whiteboard is crazy. I mean, co seeing Coach Brantley, you talking about Coach Brantley doing personnel now. I know why Coach Brantley doing personnel now. I was there in the gym at Northwestern. <laughs> yes. <laughs> years ago. Yes. It's crazy. <laughs> Shout out to B for Coach B to be the assistant of the year, man. I'm so happy for Coach B, man. I'm happy for Payne. As you just go, because I was like, I was being recruited when Lusk was, um, was there with each one of them. Like I remember coming up to this campus and yeah. Lusk and my dad had a relationship and obviously Bloom, Bloom been around forever. Then like Coach Johnson was at Butler when I was kind of early on. So like all the, uh, to see all y'all had a success y'all had this year, man. It, it was no happier person. Yeah. I'm saying it than me. I don't care how pain felt. It was no. me and John Nye. Shout out to John Nye, rest his soul. But me and John Nye was the happiest people in the world when y'all went to that final four, man. I'm um. Uh, I can't. Words can't express how happy I am for you, bro. And I wish nothing but success to you. I appreciate you jumping on with me. Oh, man, you the man. Anything you need, you know you got it from me, dog. No, no. To everybody out there listening that took us on this ride, this was a special episode. I uh, know I didn't get to y'all a lot of everybody's questions, but I got to my questions, and they were <laughs> important to me. So until next time, talking hoops with Rayfield Davis. Burler up, hammer down, all hell Purdue. Purdue to his first Final Four in the last 44 years. Coach Thompson was a special to be a part of it. One of the biggest reasons it happens from start to finish being an unranked, non offered from the Big Ten guard out of Indianapolis, coming up in the class you came up in with all the guard, all the guys was getting offers just from being out there. Like mm -hmm. all the guys that you was better than was just getting offers for no reason. And for right. you, go to Purdue, did what you did, go hoop overseas, come back, lead one of the best offenses in the country, bro. You, you gonna be one of the best minds in this game, bro. I appreciate you. Nah, man. Thank you. I appreciate you helping me through everything and being a big brother for since, since I was 18 years old, watching you get 50 when I was even younger with speech. So hey, I, I appreciate you and what you what you're doing for the game and, and showing like kids that you can do it in a different way. Like, I think that's the most important part. Like, it doesn't have to be making 80 million in the league. Like you can have a successful life by just being being around good people and being a good dude yourself. Like you, you were on your way to being one of the best broadcasters and, you know, you're doing it. You're doing that. You're giving back to the kids with crew life and everything else that you're doing in between. So, you know, the world needs more people like you and I appreciate you. Too much credit, bro. I appreciate you, bro. You had a good one, fam. Sure. You too.